Good morning, everybody. If you're visiting with us, thank you for coming and come back every opportunity you can. As a matter of fact, we'd love for you to be a part of this family here. And uh, it's a great family. We have a great preacher here. He's holding a gospel meeting this weekend at Rome, uh, Tyler Alverson. So you're stuck with me, but hopefully we'll be able to be edified tonight uh, this morning. Um, Today has been considered a day of prayer. The, the city, Lebanon City Council unanimously voted to approve a resolution to support the observance of the day of prayer for our schools Sunday, July 28th. That's today. And it encourages all churches in our community to dedicate a few minutes during the church service to pray for this upcoming school year. So I, I, I'd like for us just to take a minute and uh, pray. We had a great back to school bash yesterday, had prayer then. But I'd like to just, uh, if you'd join me in prayer right now for it. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your love for us and how you always bless us. And we pray now, Father, as our children go back to school, we lift them up to you and we pray that you would fill them with the knowledge of your will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Father, we help them to discern what's right from what's wrong and make choices that align with your principles. Please bless, Father, the teachers as well as the administration and staff. Help them all to see the importance and value of their work and that even though they're not always appreciated, appreciated as they should, please help them to know that they're making a lasting difference in the lives of our children and our nation. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Paul writes Timothy, and he says to pray for, for all people, uh, make intercessions, thanksgiving, be made for all people, for kings who are in high places, so that we may lead a peaceful life. So it's, it's a right thing to do, to pray. Uh, and so continue to pray throughout this year. You know, there's a lot of situations where schools have had shootings, and, and, and we always hear about that, but there's a lot of uh, evil in this world. And uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see, see that. And our children uh, grow up in the midst of some of that, and it can be really tough on them. Uh, as Ken mentioned, we want to thank everyone who participated in our Back to School Bash. Uh, here's a few pictures from that yesterday. Uh, just amazing. I think it was well over 100 people that participated, almost half of our congregation here. And I only have these a couple pictures, but you can go on Facebook the church's Facebook page and see more of the, those pictures. Uh, I wanted to show you a video of Tyler getting dunked, but I couldn't get it to work here. So here's, I want to thank all of you who helped uh, make this back to school bash of such a great success. You're awesome. Okay. First Peter 5, 8 says, your adversary, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Those are pretty harsh words, but probably not harsh enough to describe really what's happening. But Satan wants to destroy us. He wants to, uh, to distance us from God. And I think of our, our, our young people, beginning children and, and in school. It used to be that, that, that science teachers talked about the theory of evolution. Like it was something that some people believed, but it wasn't anything proven. Of course, rational people know that God created the heavens and the earth and everything in it but they would bring out this theory of evolution. But today, we've heard it so many times, when a lie is repeated so many times, people start believing it, and so they don't talk about the theory of evolution, they just say evolution, like it's an accepted uh, reality, accepted fact, although there's no proof whatsoever of, of evolution. And uh, so our children are bombarded with those kinds of things, and today they're being told that you can change your gender you're, you're just because if you feel like you're a man or you're a woman, no matter what sex you were born with, you, you can just be that. And people need to, to uh, bow down to your preference and, and your personal pronouns that you choose. Otherwise, you're being uh, disruptive and you know, contentious. And uh, there's just so much that's going on in our world. And, and not to mention all the media and the, the movies and the Internet and porn, uh, pornography. Uh, we, we were, Friday, we were down in Chattanooga. The Happy Hearts group went to the Tennessee Aquarium there, and 
and I was looking for a place to park, and as I was there on the street, I heard this real, I had my windows down, and I had this real loud music back here beside me, and some of the most awful, horrible language, it was just, I couldn't believe it. So I turned around to look at that person who was, and they had their windows down and everything, and I turned around and looked at, and it was a young father with two kids, probably seven, eight years old, something, in the, in the, and they're, they're just in there. I was just shocked. How could a father just be playing blaring music like that with that kind of language and his own children are right there? But that's the world that we're living in now. And people have, the more distance they, they're created from, from God, the more the evil dominates their lives. And so we really need to work hard uh, to bless our children and help our children. Um, there's a young man that lives across the street from my daughter and son-in-law and their family there in Nashville. And uh, his father is a, uh, has a pretty high position in the, the in the gas company there in Nashville. Fairly wealthy individual. And uh, has two children. The oldest is, is this young man that I've, I've been in their home. I've been with this, this young man. And the father grew up in a poor family and he wanted to give uh, to his son, everything that he never had. This is not a Christian family, but uh, so he gave this son everything. Just treated him and had uh, a, a BMW car and his own credit card that he doesn't have. His father pays for everything. His father actually built a pool with his personal quarters in the back of the property. And he has his own place and everything. Well, he has everything materially, but he doesn't have what's really important in life and he doesn't have Christ and an understanding of God's will and uh, I don't know if you saw this about a month ago but he and four others he's only 19 years old but he's with another 19 year old two 18 year olds and one 23 year old and they were in East Nashville and they started shooting at this detective almost 30 bullets fired at this detective luckily they didn't hit it but then it started a big chase and they ended up in Mount Juliet here Lebanon police helped and the Mount Juliet police and the National Police, and they arrested the boys. They put out spike strips, stopped the car, helicopters flying over. You can see all this on the Internet. But he's one of these young men. Now, can you imagine how heartbroken his parents are? And can you imagine how he's destroyed his life? I, he hasn't been to trial yet. But he'll certainly get years and years and years in jail for this. And all because Satan is evil. Satan is mean. And if we don't understand God's will, if we don't surrender our lives and our hearts and our purposes to God, we're all subject to something like this. Uh, Aaron, he read to us Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. It's very, we know this passage very well, talking about the children need to learn to obey their parents, to honor their parents. Okay, that's the fifth of the Ten Commandments, we're to honor our parents, father and mother. But it also says in verse 4, uh, for fathers to love your, uh, treat your children in a loving way, not to provoking them, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. It's our responsibility not only to have children be fruitful and multiply, but, but to teach our children. They, they're born, they're not, they're not stupid, they're very intelligent. Uh, little kids can probably teach you something about your phone that you don't know. But they don't have experience. And they need to be taught, and need to be nurtured. And, need, and, and so that's our responsibility. Now, you may be thinking, well, my kids are all grown now, or uh, I don't have children. Uh, but an old African proverb says it takes a village to raise a child. And it's true. And that's one reason God gives us the church, because we all help in one way or another. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, later. But then he says that we need to be proactive. We need to be intentional about the way we raise our children. Not just make sure they stay out of trouble, but we need to teach them what, what, why they're here, where they came from, what the purpose of life is all about, and, and how Jesus needs to be Lord of our lives. And we need to glorify Him and share that message with other, other people. Uh, and so we're not at war with people, we're at war with Satan. But He might use other people to attack us and our children. So I want to talk this morning about how to raise healthy children, not perfect children, because that doesn't exist. And certainly there are no perfect parents. Uh, when our, my son was first born, uh, I, 
after my baptism, I think it was the second most exciting moment in my life. You say, well, what about your marriage? Well, I was so nervous, I can't remember, re remember my wedding ceremony. But when I look at the pictures, I remember a few things. But, but I held that boy in my arms, and it was like, Lord, <laughs> did you make a mistake? Are you really trusting me to take care of this, this child, to raise this child? It's a big responsibility. But I want to share with you six ways this morning, six um, ways that we can, we can raise healthy children. Now, we, we've seen in the Bible some very, very godly men that ended up having children that weren't godly. Uh, the book of Job, Job was worried about his children. He was a, a faithful man, but he, he was worried about his children, kind of that they might be even cursing God in their hearts, and they would have these birthday parties and things, and uh, we, we see David had some children that were, even though David was a man after God's, God's own heart, he had some pretty evil children. So we raise the children, Proverbs 22, 6, in the way they should go. And Proverbs says, when they're old, they'll not depart from it. That's a proverb. That's not a promise. Sometimes children will go their own ways. Uh, I, I know a family in Brazil uh, they had 16 children, and 15 go to church, but one just won't go to church. <laughs> so they're all raised in the same home, but it's just the, the way it is. So number one, if you want to raise healthy children, stay close to God. What is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit? What kind of people, when we're really walking in the Spirit of God and letting Him dominate our lives, we're going to be loving people. We're going to be gentle and kind and patient. And parents need that. I, when, when, you're, when you're a young parent, you think this phase will never, you know, your child will always be in diapers, will always be crying at the wrong time, will always waking you up. It's draining. And then you go through those, you know, you tell them a hundred times, you know, say thank you or don't do this or do that. It's tiring. It's draining. And it's amazing, after years go by, and you look back and, and you see pictures of your children when they were that age, and it's just like, well, I didn't know my children were so cute. Because <laughs> you don't have time to see how cute they are when they're little. It's just, a, it's just a, a storm all at once. And so you need to stay close to God so that, that they'll absorb your values and, and, and reflect the things that, that are important to you. Uh, Number two is ask wisdom from God. James chapter, five, uh, chapter 1, verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, ask of God, and he'll give it to you liberally. You know, he loves to give wisdom. And also we know that reading God's Word, it's, it's, the, mo it's the book with the most wisdom that, that's ever been recorded. Not just the book of Proverbs and, and, and Psalms, but there's wisdom all throughout this book that, that, that shows us how we can live the best possible life. And so pray about it. And, and, and with your own children, you know, when you come to disciplining your children as they get older, when they're, when they're young, the Bible says that you need to spank your children. Not kill them, but spank them. It's important. It's something that people, our society is getting away from. But the Bible says you won't, you, you know, that's, that's the, the, the young child that can't understand conversation needs to learn to respect and obey parents. If they don't learn to respect and obey your parents, how are they going to respect and obey God? And so, but as they get older, obviously you 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 they spank less and less, and you come into other forms of discipline and punishment. And and one way is involve your children uh, in the decision of how we're, they should be punished to help them to remember that, so that they'll they'll be obedient and, and please God. And so you can pray about that with your children. Let your children know that we're on the same side. We're working together. We have the same goal. We're not, it's not parents against children or children against parents. We're a team. And if you messed up, we're going to pray about it and everything and ask God for wisdom and see what, what punishment needs to happen and involve them. And it's amazing. Sometimes they'll come out with a punishment a lot worse than, than I would have come. Oh, Dad, I think I'll write a hundred times or a thousand times I won't do this. I'm thinking like, whoa, a thousand times. So ask God for wisdom. Uh, number three, choose your battles wisely. Now this is going to offend some people here, but if your child decides that they want to root for Alabama, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not the worst thing, okay? They could be rooting for Ohio State or something, right? You know, so... but. 
that, I'm, I'm, I'm being uh, light about that, but that kind of reflects a lot of things. Sometimes we, wanna, we want to dictate everything about our children, and we don't let them make some of their own decisions, and we want to control everything. And uh, So uh, choose your battles wisely. Now, there are some things it's like, no, this, this crosses the line. We don't do this, okay? Uh, uh, a brother in Christ uh, played basketball with him and things, and he was telling me that when he grew up, on Wednesday night, he would go to football practice, junior high, high school, but his coach knew that when he come Wednesday at a certain time, his dad was going to come and pick him up. And he said when he was little, he'd be changing his clothes in the car, you know, and just because uh, they knew that they weren't going to miss church. They, that was a decision. That was a line they didn't cross. And so choose your battles wisely. Uh, Number four, realize each of your children have their own personality and temperament. Now, uh, years ago, I started studying some of these things. Uh, there's all kinds of books you can read. They're really helpful. Uh, one I'm thinking about is Personality Plus by Florence Litauer. It's, it's real easy reading, real enjoyable, but it opens your, your eyes up to see how people are just different. Uh, and people are the way they are in a lot of ways because that's just the way they're born. You're born with, with your temperament, your personality. Maybe you're born as an extrovert, an introvert. Maybe you're more of a leader type person or more analytical or more a person that just likes fun. And th these, are, these are part of different personalities and temperament types. And so this kept me out of prison <laughs> because I think I would have killed my daughter <laughs> if I hadn't understood some of these things. You know, my son was a very... A peaceful personality and if you told him to sit there and be quiet he, you can come back a year later and he'd still be sitting there waiting for you to say he could get up my daughter you could ch put a log chain on her put duct tape and everything <laughs> sit there and 10 minutes later she's she's gone it, there's different types of personality and then of course there would be different uh, ways to uh, punish or to teach or discipline those children if uh, if I after we spank our children, we would make them go lie down in their bed for a while. And uh, my son didn't get spanked very often. I thought I was a great dad until my daughter came along. <laughs> but sending my son to his room was a reward. Our daughter, you could spank her. It really didn't bother her as much as sending her to her room. She had to be by herself on her bed. That just tore her up. She would just wail because she loved people. She just likes to get out and be with people. So uh, it's really important that you realize that your children are different. They're born in the same household, raised in the same family, but they're going to react differently to you and, and have different struggles. Okay? And number five, get educated on parenting. There's a lot of good books. Now, I would only suggest Christian books with Christian authors. And, and even still, books are not the Bible. The Bible's inspired and infallible. Books are like, well, you like eating fish. You'll eat the meat and throw out any bones that may not be quite right or something. But you can get a lot of uh, good education from books. Uh, but also the Bible says in, in the book of Titus and, and also Timothy that older people, older Christians can help you uh, in your parenting skills. Uh, just about within the last two weeks, a young couple here from church came to Becky and I and and wanted to know about a situation, how what we would think about handling this situation. And they were asking others, too. It wasn't just us. But I thought, that's so, that's so good, so wise, so mature. To, because it is a complicated situation that they were facing. And uh, they were wanting to, to, to get more input. And that's what the, the Bible says. Now, the part that I really liked about that is they, they came to us. You know, if, if you wait for older Christians to come to you to... to talk to you about how you're raising your children, you might think they're meddling, or I didn't ask for your advice, right? But uh, so if you, you know, come to the older people and, and, and glean some wisdom from them. And, and last of all, uh, be a spiritually active family, spiritually active. I, I, I want to read uh, to you um, something here Becky wrote uh, for her mother. Oh, that, that PowerPoint got messed up here, but it's uh, Mrs. Mary Jo Palmer Beard's 100th. The one got slid over there in the, the zero for some reason. Uh, 100th birthday celebration is 
two weeks from, it's Saturday, August 10th. That one got slid the other way. So uh, August 10th, that's two weeks from, uh, this, not this coming Saturday, but the next Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. here in our fellowship hall. And if you're able to come, we uh, really need for you to uh, let us know. You can either text me or call me or send me an email or Becky an email, okay? Because the, the, all the, the ladies that are uh, organizing really need uh, to kind of know how many people are coming. But we ask different people, and I've gotten several people from the congregation here to, to share a memory that, of Miss Beard that you've had over the years. You know, they've, she's been here since the beginning of the congregation, more than you know, most of us, and some 73 years ago. And uh, so most all of us have had some kind of interaction. So you can share something, send it by email or, or, or text, whatever. But here's one that Becky wrote, and it's kind of long, but it really, it really expresses, I think, the spiritually active family that, uh, that we all need to be. And so I'm going to read... <coughs> Part of this, and I won't read it all, but, uh, but it is sort of a long reading, so here, here we go. Dear Mama, what a godly example you have been and are to all of us. You and Daddy would read the Bible together early weekday mornings before we even got up, before he went to work. And then you all would continue reading together along with Bob after Daddy retired. And to this day, you read to Bob every morning Bible verses and a devotional, I know that at night before you go to bed, you read the Bible for yourself. And I remember one time when we were back on furlough, we sat in on the family devotional with you, and even though you were older, you were still asking questions about meanings of certain passages in the Bible. You wanted to continue to learn as you still do to this day. I remember seeing you by yourself on the side porch praying. That made a big impression on me. I remember that each night before we went to bed as kids, you would read to us, a child, uh, us children a Bible story and pray with us. Thank you so much for praying that we would marry Christians. And I remember how you would talk to people on the phone, trying to help them with whatever they were going through, and you would cry as you tried to help them. I remember the amazing example you and Daddy were, were in picking up people to take them to church services and taking food to those in need. And you and Daddy were so very involved in the work of the church, doing the bulletin, being zone leaders, and having people over from church to our house to sing after service, just to mention a few. And thank you so very much that we always went to church services. There was never a doubt in our minds that we would be going or not. And you and Daddy were such an, an amazing example in taking care of your parents uh, with Danza, that's Becky's grandmother, here in the house and Papa back at his house. I'm so very grateful that you were able to stay home with us. I only remember you working outside the home for a short while, I think, to help Richard go to friendship. You took such very good care of us. You are one of the most selfless people I know. From what I remember, you would take money that you had gotten to spend on yourself and spend on what we needed, like clothes. You made clothes for us for so many special occasions, even my wedding dress. You were so very patient to listen to me when I would come in from school. I stuttered but you would patiently listen, and I'm sure that helped me to get past that. You are always ready to listen and to counsel. When I would be crying over something or worried about something, you would listen and help me work through my problem. And you always cooked such wonderful, healthy meals, even a hearty breakfast to send us off to school. Thank you and Daddy for teaching us to work around the house and yard and for the allowance you gave us. And thank you so much for disciplining us, disciplining us when we needed it. When we got married and said we were going to Brazil, you and Daddy never complained. But supported our decision wholeheartedly. Thank you so much for 
for you all coming to visit us in Brazil. That meant so very much. Thank you so much for being supportive and encouraging to us to this day. I want to also thank you for letting us to help you now. I know it's not easy to rely on others for things that you, that you used to do, but we're so very happy to be able to help you. After all, you have taken good care of us for all these years. Thank you for your wisdom that you shared as we were growing up and that you continue to share in such a humble way. Thank you for loving God with all your heart, for loving Daddy, and for loving us. Thank you for the, being the best mother in the universe. I love you, Becky. Well, I think that kind of typifies what we're talking about by being spiritually active. Uh, as a Christian, coming together as the Lord's body is not something we just do. It's, it's, not, it's not a moment and then we go home and go our separate ways. It's, it's our life. It's, our, it's what gives us purpose and it gives us direction in life. And so um, I'd like to for you to be, be thinking about these six uh, ways that we can raise healthy, not physically healthy, but spiritually healthy children by, by staying close to God, by praying and asking for humility, by choosing your battles wisely, by realizing that your children have different temperaments and different personalities, by being educated uh, in, in child rearing in the best ways possible, and then lastly, by being a spiritually active family. Um, God's given us a great responsibility, raising children in the Lord and, and being proactive and intentional in our parenting. Uh, where do we begin? Well, we begin, first of all, by being Christians ourselves, being an example. And, and maybe you're here this morning and you're not a Christian. And, but, but you want this for your life. You want this for your children. We're... We're going to stand and sing a song of encouragement, and we invite you to come together as we stand and sing. Well, 